Welcome back to our live coverage coming to you from the beautiful surrounds of Red Square here in Moscow. I'm absolutely delighted to say we're now also joined by SBS journalist and Moscovite Olga Klyopova. Welcome to you, Olga. Thank you, Lucy. Welcome to Russia. Thank you. It's been a fantastic time for us here so far, but I guess it would be great to know from your perspective, Russia is such a, a vast, vast country. How will it go in uniting the many, many cultures that are embedded within it for this World Cup? Oh, a million dollar question, Lucy, but hopefully it will go well. And as you mentioned, it's not only a huge country, it's also ethnically diverse. We have 150 different ethnicities living in, country, in Russia only. And we've been preparing for this World Cup for the last seven and a half years, so <laughs> since 2010. And then we had the Sochi Olympic Games. So the nation, I think, is somewhat prepared to embrace all these foreigners. But the thing is, we have a million and a half for foreigners coming to Russia, invading the country. So I think we're stepping into unknown and I think the nation is both excited and a bit nervous but just because we don't know what to expect from the foreigners. Uh, Olga, nice to see you. Uh, security has been a big theme heading into the World Cup, uh, a big issue for everyone, particularly foreigners coming into town. Um, but I understand it's also had some impact on the locals. Well, true. Uh, we, we've seen unprecedented measures uh, for security measures. And the thing is, some local businesses took the hit. For example, the, the arm industry. Uh, what I heard is there was a decree, a special decree signed by the president just for this period of time, for two months, when no one can sell, buy arms, but more so we can't carry arms, be it knife or rifles. And I'm talking more so about, for example, sports. So all the sports events are closed down. But I mean, on one hand, it's, it's great, we feel more secure. But on the other, those businesses um, having a loss and it's a big one. So it's a double edged sword if we talk about the security measures. And I don't know whether you notice or not, in the, in the city, in Moscow, I've seen um, security guards all over the place, including the shops, the metros, so you have to go through the frames. Um, so hopefully it, it makes you feel more secure, but maybe it's a bit too much. A special good evening also to our South Australian viewers. If you are just joining us now, we are delighted to have Olga Klyopova with us talking through all things Russia from that perspective. Um, what about from the footballing side of things? There's been a lot of pessimism, I understand, from the Russian press towards the national team. Why is that so? That's a sad moment and you're absolutely right. And just recently, maybe it was in the morning news, uh, football players from the national squad almost made a plea to the Russian media to stop harassing the squad because they were not performing great so far. So the expectations are not too high from the national team. Uh, and I think the players, what they actually said is, guys, give us some time. We're going to perform the best we can. We're going to play on our limits and just don't um, bench, uh, don't put the label on us that everything go down. So they just need a bit of trust and hope, I think, both from the nation and from the media. What about some of the beautiful things, though, that we can experience here in Russia? We've spoken a lot about the security. Foz and I touched on briefly the political uh, themes coming out of the, you know, much of this World Cup and the build-up to it. But what, what can we experience here in Russia and what can fans look forward to? Well, absolutely, it's the hospitality. I think, well, hopefully you've noticed the Russian people are very hospitable. And they're very welcoming as well, especially when it comes to foreigners. Probably it comes from the Soviet times when the country was very closed and we haven't seen that many people from overseas. So it's always, we, they try to put their best, um, the best food they have. and. Um, did you like the food, by the way? I've Lucy? enjoyed the food very much, actually, yes. Yeah. <laughs> so the famous thing like borscht, it's the soup made of beetroot, it's world-renowned soup. Uh, so hopefully that's one thing. And secondly, actually, funny thing, with what was mentioned earlier in the news today, there was a special warning for the Russian women to be aware of the foreigners. The thing is, after the Olympics in 1980, we had an increase, like baby boom. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that was an awkward situation when I just saw the news, like, Russian ladies, be aware, lots of foreigners are coming, you just have to be, like, be on guard. Be on your guard. Yes. If your team wins, then it could be a bit of trouble. Um, Foz, let's talk uh, about, from our perspective, what we've uh, gathered from Russia as a host and the issues surrounding it, particularly when it comes to MH17. 
Oh, gee. Um, there was... Uh, this World Cup has been one of the more problematic um, since way back in the 30s, really, um, is because back in 2010, the awarding of the World Cup to Russia and Qatar was hugely controversial. And, of course, 17 of the 24 of the Exco committee of FIFA since that time have been uh, found either to be corrupt or accused of such. Uh, so that whole awarding at that time was is mired still now in deep controversy and it leading into the World Cup of course there's a lot of talk and this is one of the beauties of of the uh, the global game is a lot of the journalists great journalists around the world now focus their attention here and whilst we love to talk about on field play it gives them an opportunity to get their messages out about Putin and about the, the government about the international relations and so on and it is an important part of the game because the awarding of a FIFA World Cup gives the opportunity for a country to promote themselves that's mm. what, absolutely yeah. right. and it gives a, an opportunity for um, a president um, and political figures uh, to promote themselves. Uh, so that's why it's important to be discussed and to, ha and to make sure that we understand the context around it. And this one is one which we have really mixed, certainly I do, I, I, I can't speak for everyone else, but I have really mixed feelings about the awarding of it. Once we're here though, the local people have every right to, to celebrate it, to enjoy it. They're not involved in that. Much of that is imposed on them um, in MH17 that you uh, referenced before, that's a really uh, problematic issue for Australia, right? Our Australian government's made clear that they, they believe the Russian government is directly involved. So uh, there's no diplomatic mission here, although I understand the Australian ambassador will be at the game. So it's important that those statements are made. It's important we don't forget that. But once the football starts, we can at least start to enjoy it. Yeah, which is what we love so much. Olga, thank you so much for coming and joining us on the couch here. Fantastic to have your company. We appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Thank you. All right, stay with us. Coming up, the World Cup drama begins before a ball is even kicked. The 2018 FIFA World Cup continues live right here on SBS.